Hiya. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be talking about discrete uh, conditional expectations. Uh, so now the idea is basically um, like we, we know how to do conditional probability um, and distributions. Well, what happens? Like what's then the expected value um, if one thing is conditioned on another thing? Like how do we calculate that? Um, and actually, it's a lot easier than one what we might think. So what we have is if I have like, um, where's my pen? There we go. Um, then like if I look at a conditional expectation of some random variable y on an event a, and notice how here a is an event and, ran and y is a random variable. So this is why like I keep being very specific as to which what is what. Um, and what we might have is, okay, so what is the expected value of y? It's dependent on the event a. So here we'll say it's given a. So the expected value of y given a. Now, what is this equal to? Well, we're trying to figure out y. So we should probably do the summation over the y, right? So all of y of y. And normally what we would have, so maybe I should write down the normal thing. So normally if I have this, I have this, right? So all of y, y times the probability that y is equal to y. So I can kind of, I'm basically kind of copying everything um, up until now. So I might as well just copy the same thing, y equals y. But here I'm given that I have my event a. So given an event a. Um... And that's basically it. It's that simple. Easy peasy. So let's look at an example uh, and see if this uh, kind of makes a little more sense when we do something in an example setting. Uh, so we're going to let y be the number of heads in four tosses of a fair coin. So I take four coins um, and y is number of heads of heads. Four tosses. Um, now we're told that we received at most two heads. Um, so we're told that we know, um, we have at most two heads. Now, what is the expected value of Y? Originally, we kind of already knew the expected value of Y way back in the day, right? We just look at all of them, but now we're given new information. We're told, oh, this information at most two heads tells me that Y has to be less than or equal to two. So we can't have three heads, we can't have four heads. It's only zero, one, or two. So in other words, what we're trying to calculate is the expected value of y given that y is less than or equal to two. This is our event. Uh, so this is our event. When I plug in numbers into a random variable, I have an event. Uh, and so what I have here is, well, let me just write out what I would have. I look at all y. So here I know my y's, right? It's, um, well, I guess I'll just write all y. Um, I have y times p to the, the equations up here. y is equal to y, given that y is less than or equal to 2. Um, okay, so let's do some work because we got to figure this part out here, right? Uh, this part's a little confusing. Um, so let's kind of look at, um, let's remind ourselves what this kind of should look like. Um, so let's go back and look at how many um, heads we should get. So let, let's look at P of Y equals Y. So Y here, right? Um, y is the number of heads in four tosses of a coin. Uh, so it's number of heads in four coin tosses. This should, your spidey sense should go off to kind of think of, oh, this should be binomial distribution, binomial. Um, and so here, what we're going to use is the binomial distribution. So what I want to know is in four coin costs, I want Y heads. My probability of getting a head is one half, so I'll multiply by Y. And then the probability of not getting a head or a tails is one half, so it's four minus Y. This, if you can kind of notice here, this multiplied together just gives me one half to the four. So in other words, we have um, four choose y, oops, not four divided by y, four choose y, times one over two to the four. Um, okay, so we have this formula. 
Um, what this tells me is this little part here. If I look at, oh, wait, this is, uh, yeah. Um, that's okay. Yeah. So what this part little tells me, so if I look at P of Y less than or equal to two, what this is just telling me is this is equal to P of Y equals zero plus P of Y equals one plus P of Y equals two, right? This is basically what we kind of have. So here we would just plug into our formula. So four choose zero times one over two to the four plus four choose one. I keep doing division times one over two to the four plus four choose two times one over two to the four. Um, and doing this, we basically end up getting one over 16 plus four over 16 plus 11 over 16 um, or six over 16, sorry, uh, which gives me 11 over 16. Now, why does this help? Um, it's because we're trying to solve this thingy here. Um, this little part here. And here what I'm going to kind of use is the fact that we have the equality uh, p of y equals y given y less than or equal to 2 is equal to the, the is equal to p of y equals y and y is less than or equal to 2 divided by probability of y less than or equal to 2. Because this here is much more easier to kind of solve. Why? Well, let's kind of look at this. So let me actually rewrite this here. Y equals Y given Y less than or equal to two. This is equal to pi Y equals Y and Y is less than or equal to two. P of Y less than or equal to two. Now, what is this top thing here saying? Well, if Y is equal to little Y and big Y is less than or equal to two, well, this is just saying this part here is just saying the same thing. It's just saying y is equal to y. That's it. The y less than or equal to 2 condition doesn't really tell, tell us anything. It's like, well, it's kind of there. Um, to kind of help clarify this a little more, um, like the formula, think of it this way. Um, if I have this formula, right, the formula of y is equal to y is given by 4 choose y 1 over 2 to the 4, right? If y is less than or equal to 2, this formula doesn't change. The formula isn't dependent on y less than or equal to 2. It's kind of already in there. So even if y is less than or equal to 2, the formula doesn't change. Formula is same when y is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, this is just going to be equal to this. And so what we end up having here is um, this is equal to, we have 4 choose y times 1 over 2 to the 4 divided by 11 over um, 16. So 2 to the 4 is actually 1 over 16. So we have 4 over 4 choose y, 1 over 16 divided by 11 over 16. The 1 over 16s cancel. So we get 4 choose y, 4 choose y times 1 over 11. And that is our final answer. That is the expected value of y. Um, now, we're not fully done yet. That's just this. Um, so I guess it's not. I did this wrong. Uh, that's just equal to this part, right? And I'm running out of space. Um, let me see. Can I make more room? No. Oh my God, I didn't make give myself enough room. Um, Aram, you're horrible. Okay, let me move things around a little. Oops, oh, fudge, a banana. Uh, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this is equal to four, choose y is times one over 11. And this we're gonna remove here. Is this? Not removing. There we go. It's removing. Um, and this part I'm going to remove because we kind of saw this because I need this space. I'm going to make this bigger for now because uh, I need this space. Um, and so, 
But I remember what I'm trying to solve here is this, right? So let me rewrite this down. So I have e of y equals y given y is equal y less than or equal to 2. This, remember, is equal to the sum of all y. So we'll say y is equal to 1 um, all the way up to, sorry, 0. Um, all the way up to, uh, well, all the numbers. Uh, but here, y has to be less than or equal to 2, so I can basically just go to 2. That's okay, right? Um, and then I want to multiply this by y times the probability that y is equal to y, and y, uh, given that y is less, big Y is less than or equal to 2. I guess here, nah, I'm going to do this in two steps. Sorry. So we'll rewrite the equ equation, all y, all y. Um, and so this is equal to, well, since y is less than or equal to 2, this all y can just be y from 0 to 1, 0 to 2. All y, so this is just y is equal to 0 to 2. Y, we keep this equation here we just solved, right? It's equal to that. So we have 4, choose y, times 1 over 11. And at this point, we can actually just plug in. So we have 1 over 11, um, and then we have 0 times 4 choose 0, plus 1 times 4 choose 1, plus 2 times 4 choose 2. Um, here, um, I'm running out of space, so I'll kind of do this fast. This will give me, this is 0. Uh, this here is just 1 times 4. So I have 1 times 4, and then this will give me 2 times 6. So plus 2 times 6 over 11. Uh, and so we end up getting 16 over 11. And that is, uh, yeah, that is our final answer. So our expected value of y, given that y is less than or equal to 2, is 16 over 11. Pretty nice. Um, this is very different than our normal expected value, right? Normally, we would expect, what, if we're doing four coin tosses, we would expect like two and a half because uh, we have zero, one, two, three, four. So we would expect two actually So that because that's the middle, right? So we would expect two normally. But here we're noticing that since we're limiting it to be less than or equal to two, we have a smaller expected value, which makes complete sense. Um, so yeah, so we'll stop here for a second in this video. Um, and we'll notice and we'll then look at what other things kind of translate nicely in terms of expected value uh, for something like this. Um, so we'll stop here and I'll see you in the next video. See you then. Bye.